In today's video, we're going to talk about Selenium Automation Testing with cookies. Automation testing of web applications with Selenium often involves interactions with cookies, which are small pieces of data stored in a user's web browser. Cookies are commonly used for various purposes, including session management, user authentication, and tracking user behavior. In Selenium, you can interact with cookies using the WebDriver's built-in methods. Here's how you can work with cookies in Selenium Automation Testing. The first thing you can do is accessing cookies. To access cookies, you can get the getCookie method uh, provided by the WebDriver. This returns a set of cookie objects. You can also add cookies. You can add cookies to the web browser session using the addCookie method. This is useful for setting up specific scenarios such as logging in as a user with a particular session. You can also delete cookies. And to delete cookies, you can use the delete cookie method. You can delete a specific cookie by specifying its name, or you can delete all cookies. You can also get a specific cookie. You can retrieve a specific cookie by its name using the get cookie named method. Or you can also verify cookie attributes. So you can also check the attributes of a cookie, such as its name, value, domain, path, and expiration date. There's another thing called same site cookie attribute. And what this does is it allows a user to instruct browsers to control whether cookies are sent along with the request initiated by third-party sites. It is introduced to prevent something called cross-site request forgery attacks. And same site cookie attributes accepts two parameters as instructions. The first is strict. When the same site cookie attribute is set to strict, the cookie will not be sent along with the request initiated by the third-party websites. When it's set as lax, uh, or when you set the cookie same site attribute to lax, the cookie will be sent uh, along with the get request initiated by the third-party website. In this next part of this video, I'm going to show you how you can create all that we just talked about in your own project. And right here, I have a new project open, and this project is uh, built from all the other videos that we talked about earlier using Selenium Python. And this project really doesn't require knowledge of those previous videos, but we just use the same uh, project. So if you find any of this other stuff interesting, I would suggest you go check out those other videos. You might find something useful for your own uh, learning. But for today's project, we're just going to create a new script under this test folder by right-clicking test, going to new, and then just creating a Python file. And I'm going to name it this time test underscore uh, selenium underscore cookies.py. And I have a new file. And now I'll start first by importing uh, something that we'll be using. So I'm going to import time. Uh, and then after that, uh, I'm going to create some different functions to create to perform different tasks. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how we can add cookies. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste some code over. And right here, we created a test add cookies right here. So we use Chrome to access the web browser, admlucid.com. We wait there for three seconds and then we just add some cookies. So we can use add cookie, this command right here to add cookies into our web driver right here. And right here, we're passing something, and this is Chrome. And uh, if you haven't watched the previous videos, you might be confused, what is this parameter that we're passing in? And how are we calling this parameter? Well, this is actually something that we specified in our comp test file here. If I go to here, our comp test file, we see that we have a Chrome function here, which starts a web driver session. And we're actually passing that web driver session into each of our uh, functions. And we can do this because we're using PyTest and we have this tag PyTextDocsFixture, which allows us to pass that function into other functions as a parameter. So if we go back to our test Selenium cookies right here, we see that that's what we're doing. And then we're adding basically these cookies that we named test1, test data one and test data two, which these uh, with these following uh, parameters. And so let me run this and show you. Uh, and then afterwards, what we're doing is we use the Chrome driver to get those cookies based off their name to see if we successfully added it. And so let me run this and show you if this is working. So it starts a new web driver. Uh, this is actually popping up on my other window, so I have to drag it over. Uh, so I drag it over and then 
but basically add the cookies. And then now we'll see it passed and it was able to grab the different cookies that we passed into the test. So we see it passed there. So something else we can do, uh, like we talked about in the video, is already we already showed you some get cookies, but we can use another, uh, we could create another one called uh, dot get cookies. Uh, and again, we'll pass the Chrome in as a parameter. And this time what we'll do is, so again, we'll use the same website right here. Go ahead and paste those two same lines of code there. But this time what we'll do is we'll just say uh, get cookies. Just straight up get cookies and see what are all the cookies that we can get. Now, what we can do is we can add these cookies that we specified above. So I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to add some cookies. So we already got those cookies that we have for this web page, but I'm going to go ahead and let me add two more cookies and then use the get cookies again to see uh, what changes afterwards. So go ahead and run this. Uh, drag the window over. It passes. And then we'll give it some time, it's still running. So this is what we have. So let me show you the print statements. So these uh, are what we have right here. So first, there's no cookies here. You see that empty right there, there's no cookies. But after we add the cookies using these Chrome add cookie lines, we see that we now have two cookies. So the test data one is one of the cookies and then Test data two is the second cookie, and that's it. So those are the two cookies we added. Okay, let me show you another function now that we can do. Uh, this time what we'll do is we'll delete cookies. So what we'll do is um, we will, uh, so since we're using mostly the same stuff, let me go ahead and do this. So right here, we just go to the same web page. we'll add the two cookies, we'll print the cookies we have. But after this, what we'll actually do is we'll actually use the Chrome delete cookies. Uh, delete cookie and we specify which cookie we're deleting so data one and then what we'll do is we will print those cookies that we have after we delete a cookie so let me go ahead and print this and then run this check our window over so it's just showing you that we're going to the same web page okay and we'll give it some time to finish running. Okay, so now if I go down here, so initially when we're printing our cookies, we see that we have test data two, which is one of the cookies. And then we see we have test data one, which is our second cookie. But after deleting all one cookie, which we have to delete test data one, we see that we only have test data two right here as our cookie. So that's the delete cookie. Now let me show you something else. We can delete all our cookies. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this over because really the difference of this and what we have above here is just one line. And it is basically this one, we said delete cookies, but this one we use delete all cookies. And if I run this again, let me show you what happens. Well, give us some time to run and load. But basically what we have is we have initially, before we delete all our cookies, we have the two cookies, so test data two and test data one. But after we delete all the cookies, it becomes empty. We have no cookies. So that's deleting cookies. Next, I'll show you how we can add different uh, strict cookies and lax cookies, for example. So let me create something called def, let me create a new function, def test add, uh, this will be uh, strict cookie. Pass Chrome in, and we'll basically we will do this. So we'll basically go to the same. We'll go to this web page right here, and then we'll sleep, and then we'll print what cookies we have. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cookie, and this is very specific. But basically, I'll just print a paste over. We're basically adding a cookie. And basically the same things, we specify the name, the values, but this time we're specifying same site and this one we're using the parameter strict. So that's adding a strict cookie, hence the name of this function. And if I uh, basically, uh, I will run some stuff. So I'm going to, uh, 
copy this and we will just basically come down to a new line right here. We'll just print that and I'll show you what this looks like. And we see that the same site attribute right here says strict afterwards. So uh, again, we'll see that before, this is what we have for our cookies. And then afterwards, basically we added another cookie right here, uh, right here, and this is just strict right here. So this is another cookie. So this is dash test data one. Uh, but before our cookie was up here, uh, it was just some other cookie. The name was a spinet anti-forgery and so on. But yeah, okay. So next thing, what I'm gonna do, so that was before when we got all the cookies and now that's when we get this cookie. Uh, let me show you another thing we can do was with lax cookies. So I'm just gonna paste it over because it's very similar in terms of the code, but uh, we'll go ahead and paste this right here. We just use lax cookie here. And instead of same site uh, strict, we use same site lax. Let me show you what happens. So first we're gonna print all the cookies on the website, then we're gonna add a cookie and then we're gonna print uh, the attributes of that one cookie we added. So go ahead and run it. Give it some time to load. And afterwards we see that after we add the cookie, our cookie has uh, these values, it has this name, but then this same site, it becomes lax right here. And so that's adding strict and lax cookies. And yeah, so these are various different ways you can manipulate uh, the cookie settings in your Selenium Python project. Uh, I just want to keep this video brief, show you the different functions and different functions you can work with. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And yeah, thank you for listening. We look forward to seeing you next time.